Hey, folks, today I want to talk to you about how you cannot let anything stop the blessings in your life. You know, the word blessings in the Greek and the Hebrew, it means the favor of God. It means God's prosperity on your life. And I think sometimes we don't talk about that enough, that God desires for us to have tremendous favor in all areas of our life. This includes your health. This includes your children, your relationships. This also includes your finances and your resources. It is God desired that we not only have favor in these areas, but also that we have what you call prosperity or to have more than enough. You know, God did not call us to just be able to pay our bills weekly or just be able to do some things, but God called us to be able to be a blessing. That's why David said, my cup runneth over. That means that you have so much blessings in your life, that you have so much reserve that you don't have room for what God wants to do in your life. And so what you do with that is you begin to take that and give it to others. You take some of that and you bless others. That's what Ephesians uh, chapter three, verse 20 says that now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And I want you to know that whatever you're thinking about for your future, God thinks double. That whatever you're thinking about for your children, God thinks double. That whatever, when you look into the future and you began to say, what does my future look like? When God sees it, he sees something so far more extraordinary. And that's hard to imagine. It's hard to think that you could think so much about yourself, but that God could think way more about you. But that's exactly what I want you to begin to conceive in your mind, that God wants to do extraordinary things in your life. But watch this. It's up to you not to allow anything or anyone to block you from all those great things that God wants to do in your life. You see, God has given us the opportunity to choose. He said, choose life or death. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock any man that hears my voice. If he will just open up, I'll come in. So the choice is ours every day that we live. The scripture says his mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. But don't you know you have to accept the mercy of God on your life? You have to accept the forgiveness of God. And most importantly, you have to accept the healing power of God. And that's why I love our text this week. It's taken from a very familiar story, Blind Bartimaeus. Many of you know the story. He was a beggar that sat by the road. And because he was physically blind, he possibly couldn't work. And because he couldn't work, he had no money. And so he did what the best thing he knew to do. And that was to beg people for money or ask uh, for help or alms, if you will. In those days, beggars had certain cloaks that they would wear. And that's how they would be identified as people that needed help, people that were handicapped, so to speak. And on this precious day, somehow, some way, I'm not sure the Bible doesn't say, but he catches wind that Jesus is going to be coming past his route. Jesus is going to be coming where he sits. Jesus is going to be within a ear's reach. I don't even know if he knew that, but he just knew that Jesus somehow, some way was somewhere around where he was. And I love this story because it reminds us that we have every day of our life to take opportunities to get more of Jesus in our lives. I often tell people that if you don't want to change, then don't get around Jesus. Because if you get around Jesus, things are going to change. You're going to change. And the thing about change is you can't be afraid to have change because without change, there is no growth. And without growth, there is no success. And without success, there is no real improvement in your life. And so I want to challenge you today to get excited about the changes that are taking place in your life, that even all of the quick changes and the long changes and the multiple changes that are piling up. And you say, there's a lot of change going on. You know, God is requiring a lot of me to go here and go there. Think of it this way. It's an opportunity to improve. It's an opportunity to grow. It's an opportunity to be success. So the more we change, the more we grow. Got it? The more we change, the more we improve. The more we accept change, the, more, the higher we go up in our life, the further we go forward in our destiny in God. And here was Bonamara saying, I'm ready for the change. I'm ready to go to the next level. And many of you know the story. He begins to cry out, Jesus, the Bible says. The Bible says he yelled so loud it was embarrassing. 
that people were embarrassed that he was being so ornery, if you will, so out of pocket, so so uh, uh, un, unsophisticated. But how many of you know that when you really need something, you don't care what anybody thinks? How many of you know that when you really have an opportunity to have change and when you really have an opportunity to have blessings, that's not the time to be saying, please, that's not the time to be saying, excuse me. When you're desperate enough for the blessings of God in your life, when you're desperate enough for change, when you're desperate enough to go to the next level, nobody has time to be asking for permission. At that point, you are aggressive in your faith. Last week, we talked about the audacity of faith. Audacity is when you cross the line. Audacity is when you do things that technically you're not supposed to do because of the confinements of whatever life has presented to you. But that's why I love real faith. Faith allows us to go beyond us. Faith allows us to go beyond our own ability and tap into the supernatural. Faith puts our super with our, God puts his super with our natural and supernatural things begin to happen. And people begin to say, I can't believe that he has the audacity to think he could be debt free. I can't believe she has the audacity to think her children are going to uh, rise up and call her blessed, that her kids are in Congress, that her daughter, her son is going to. That's what the scripture says. The scripture says faith is the substance of things that we hope for. And it's the evidence of the things that we cannot see. I may not know how, I may not know where, I may not know when, but I know that God can and will do it in my life. You see, that's what Bottom Maris had. He had a faith that said, I don't know if, if, if Jesus can hear me or not. I don't know if I'll be able to actually make contact with him, but I'm going to put that lifeline out and I'm going to begin to call his name as loud as I can. And when they began to tell him to shut up, when they began to tell him to be quiet, when they began to tell him, watch this, to stay in your place, that's what they were saying. Continue to be a beggar. There are people that want you to continue to suffer. There are people that don't think you have the right to have God's favor. There are people that don't think you have the right to have God's blessings on your life. But what you got to do is you can't pay the enemy no attention. You can't pay the naysayers no attention. You've got to go after all the blessings that God has for you and keep on calling his name. Jesus, he cries out. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. He cried out so loud that Jesus finally said, now I know the cry of faith. Hallelujah. I know when somebody's serious, you need, you know, we all go to church, but then you have people that some people that go to church and they're serious about reaching God. That's like the woman with the issue of blood. She was serious about touching the hymn. She was going to get her healing. It's so important for you to grab a hold of that serious type of faith that causes God to pay attention, not just making noise to be making noise, but have a sincere prayer language, have a sincere dedication to the word of God and to the things of God. And most importantly, cry out to God. God loves when we cry out to him. When we believe in him in such a way that we won't have options, I think what God is saying to some of us is stop having options. God can't be one of your options, church. God can't be something you go to the third time around or the fourth time around. He has to be first in your life. Don't try everything and then try God. Put God to the test first and foremost, and the miracle will happen. Jesus, the Bible says Jesus turned around and said, who's calling me? And they said, cheer up. He's calling you. They, they, the Bible says Bartimaeus took the, the beggar's cloak, threw it off of his, his, his body and got up and they led him to Jesus. And Jesus asked him this, watch this. What do you want? Man, I often said if I was in Bartimaeus' shoes, I would have, I would have had a laundry list of all the things I ever wanted done because I'm standing in the face of God himself. And he said, I want to see him. And Jesus gave him his sight, healed him right there on the spot. What we don't talk about a lot concerning Bartimaeus is that he becomes one of the biggest evangelists for the gospel of Jesus Christ. He becomes one of the biggest voices to say, come see a man like the woman with the uh, woman at the well. Come see a man that showed me everything. He begins to spread the gospel. Why? Because of the healing power that took place in, in his life. And I just want to encourage you today to not do not back down from the blessings of God in your life. Fight for your favor. Fight for the blessing. Grab the blessing and take whatever healing that is yours today. 
Take whatever peace that is yours to take today. Take whatever joy, whatever increase, whatever financial blessings that is yours today in Jesus name. Father, I just thank you for every person that is joining us today. And whenever they may see this, I pray the favor of God will be upon them life, their life and rest upon them in Jesus name. I want to encourage you to send us your prayer request at prayer at nowchurchfl.com. If you want to find out more information about Now Church, we encourage you to log on to nowchurchfl.com and just experience, get in one of our life groups. You know, your Christian journey is better together. Join a life group and definitely come to service, come to church on one of our Sunday services or one of our midweek services. And then there's so many other ministries that you can connect with. We have women, men, young adults, youth, and so many other things going on. Our Helping Hands ministry, if you want to get out in the streets and be a blessing to the homeless and the less fortunate, if you want to connect with our Tuesday food bank and hand out groceries or bring groceries and, or lead people to come to get groceries, join a ministry. That's going to take your faith to a whole new level. I love you. God bless you. I want to encourage you to sow a seed today. Whatever God placed on your heart, you know, we're right in the middle of our building fund. We are excited that God has opened the door for us to take it to the next level. We're believing God. I, we have a lot of money to raise. And so I'm believing God that some real partners and members will join with me and help us raise that $3.5 million that we need in order to acquire our own, our own property. You know, South Florida is a very, very uh, in-demand area. And this is the area God has called us in, man. I think sometimes, man, God, why don't you just call me somewhere in the middle of nowhere where the properties are, are more affordable, but this is where God has called us. But I'm telling you where there is vision, there is provision. All it takes is one person. All it takes is one millionaire. All it takes is one successful person to say, pastor, I got you. So we are believing God for our $3.5 million budget so that we can take it to the next level. It's been extraordinary what God has been able to do in this property with us releasing it. But now as we enter our 10th year, that's right, come January 2014, we enter 10 years of ministry. It's the year of the takeover. And God says it's time to take over. So I pray that you will sow a substantial seed today, that you'll be generous. Call me here at the office if you want to do something big or something special. I'd love to talk with you. Maybe somebody wants to give us a building or a property. Who knows, church? I'm believing God for big and I'm not letting, letting nothing stop my blessing and neither should you. I love you. God bless you.